<laughs> okay, so we saw we saw a contract. We saw a motherfucking contract to kill. Contract to kill, starring Steven Seagal. It's one of his late period movies. And you know how we've talked about how he's becoming increasingly slow, and his coats are becoming increasingly bigger. <laughs> well. I don't know if the coats can get any bigger if he could talk any slower than he did in this one, or <laughs> this if the plot was, could be any more. He can't confusing. get any bronzer. That's this yeah. one was, uh, I just, yeah, I, him I, and Cake Boss. Yeah. I didn't think, guy. I didn't think he could sound more like being on Quaaludes than any of the previous <laughs> oh, yeah. movies, but like it's gotten worse. So you're talking high level, high value targets. Wow, I'm interested. Tell me more. He's even more chopped and screwed yeah. than he, he was before. That <laughs> so at the, be- at the beginning, they do the scene in every Seagal movie where, like, a guy, a guy who's like, "Yeah, I'm a t- secret agent from the government in- intelligence bureau," and he, he talks to, he meets Seagal in like some bar, and he goes, uh, "You're actually, you've never lost a fight." You made every gunshot you've ever made. Every woman wants to have sex with you. Everyone thinks you're cool, including the terrorists, the drug dealers, and the government. So can you do this op for me? Okay, so here's the deal. If I'm coming in to do this, I need resources. I'm going to pick my own team. I want my own equipment, my own gear. And I'll need a jet to tote me and my team around. And in every movie, Seagal goes, I'm going to tell you one motherfucking thing. (laughs) We going to do this my way. And what that always means is that this mission is going to be 90% him sitting in a yeah. car. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Not even and driving. There was, there's, Seagal is not an active man these it's days. It's amazing. So he, he has several fights in which it's like his body doubles back and then cut to him punching at the screen. <laughs> Like there's yeah. a person there cut back to his body double. And then one scene where he shot some people. But in that scene, he shot them from the front seat of the car he was driving. <laughs> he didn't well, even get out of the he car. He made some shots at one point and then advanced up the stairs like a shuffling old man worried about leaking <laughs> urine. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the, yeah. the novelty. Like it was a prostate problem. <laughs> shuffle. Well, the, the interesting thing. Like, okay, uh, the plus of this movie is that it did feature quite a lot of Seagal, unlike let's say the Asian Connection or, or the, the Perfect, Perfect Weapon, Weapon, where mm-hmm. Seagal is basically the villain of the movie that just appears in like maybe ten minutes of screen time to yeah. just yeah. There's a lot of Seagal in philosophically this, yeah. and touch women it, awkwardly. And in those decide it, that he like just refuses to shoot unless they come to his house now, yeah, yeah, like, because yeah. it's like the same like. Like We've Minsk noticed, yeah. mansion yeah. that we there think is, is just his. There is a location sh- uh, in this movie that was like the main like drug dealers hangout that was recycled probably thirty times in in this film. But we, you know, because we're yeah. Seagal, you it's, know, completists, it's, we've realized yeah. that this same building was used in several. Yeah. Of it's other obviously movies. his fuck dacha outside Murmansk. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, we want to make clear this is in the there are two categories. Yeah, the villain Seagal and the hero Seagal. And the villain Seagal does things the real Steven Seagal would never do, like traffic women, <laughs> have sex slaves, <laughs> say, say confusing shit that goes nowhere. This where, one had I mean, a really awful moment where, you know, we all know about his penchant for sitting awkwardly and having his, you know, having a naked woman bestride him. Uh, but this time, I really felt like I wanted to call the cops on <laughs> behalf of this poor woman who got sh- topless and then had him like listlessly. Girl. Paw her tits for like ten minutes. It's like we oh, saw too much of that. He woman. Like, he full on just squeezed. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He was squeezing the Charmin, and, and it was and imagine, imagine a woman, you know, in her twenties yeah. or whatever, in a lingerie, reclining naked on a bed, <laughs> lying next to a man wearing a black leather jacket the size of a tarp, yeah. <laughs> fully clothed. Pawing her her breasts. Yeah, it was it was disgusting. Yeah, I I, I demand an <laughs> Interpol investigation. I need to know where that woman is now. Could you uh could you take some of my natural juices from the pan that I'm laying <laughs> in and baste my torso, please? Here's, now, here's a little more fucking thing we like to call au jus. <laughs> now the other the other thing that we noticed about this movie is that. Okay, unlike the other, the the main Seagal movies, like Good Man, Mercenary Absolution, or some of the other action movies where he's not just sort of the villain behind the scenes, where he takes a more, shall we say, active role in in the Very generous (laughs) use of the term. 
is that in those movies, usually he has a sidekick who's a much younger man who does almost all of the action and fighting scenes himself because, you know, like it's sort of like his stunt double. I but tried like to get off of this hemorrhoid pillow. Sorry. In, in this movie, they sort of have that, but like it's a guy who's slightly younger than him, but not really. It, who just does. That, oh, Asian Kyle Tr- McLaughlin? He's yeah. Like, Kind, he might be his age, but he just took care of himself. Yeah, he's a yeah. more well-preserved version. Yeah, he didn't eat Auntie Anne's hot dog pretzels every day for like twenty years. <laughs> but this yeah, guy he just looked did, like uh, Asian comic Lachlan. Instead of doing fight, he's guy did a little fighting, but he mainly just did drone remote control. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that yeah. was like, his role. Lot, the there's a lot of drones in this tech movie. Tech into a movie for a very low cost. I mean, you know, this is like a two hundred dollar Walmart drone. Yeah, that they use. Mm-hmm. and they put like a plastic gun in like a window and then put like CGI flash to make it look like it was shooting. Yeah, it's the, sh- the shooter copter. Yeah, yeah. really bad. Uh, I, hey, motherfucker, I'm just, uh, you're not for me, but uh, for my friend, is there any way your drone can go unnoticed into uh, Forever 21 dressing room? <laughs> You know, just for, you know, if we needed to do an op there. <laughs> this one motherfucker's called reconnaissance. I mean, to me, like, since we've been watching these movies, like, to me, like, and, and this movie really pushed it to a, a new limit that I didn't think was possible. Uh, watching these movies, it, it's, they're surreal. They're surreal and <laughs> subversive of the whole medium of film because you watch them and things happen and it just sort of washes over you and you're like 45 minutes into the movie and then you realize you don't know Anything that has happened, no, no. Yeah. like you don't know what the plot is. Towards like you, the like, end, we were it's like, just, where, yeah. where, who are these people? Yeah. Why it's, are they there? It's experimental filmmaking in that, like, they fill <laughs> an hour and a half. You feel of, like you're sundowning with all <laughs> yeah, yeah, but like nothing Makes happens. Question reality. Yeah. And it ended in the most avant-garde way a Steven mm, Seagal yeah. movie has ever <laughs> ended. So he kills one of the two, he kills one of the bad guys after doing one of those. Like, I'm not actually going to fight because I fought for two minutes earlier and I'm wounded. <laughs> so I'm just going to sit down across from you and then after some bullshit dialogue I'll pull a gun and shoot you he did that twice and then he's in a car chase of course we don't know what he was chasing but he was in the middle of a car chase and it just cuts oh Serbian like, McDonald's like stop ser- Serbian McDonald's stop serving wheat pies after this era <laughs> hour it's like the end of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, just like this just, abrupt cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, which is and, amazing. And even more so because at least that was like at the end of the plot she'd ostensibly gotten away. Here he's in the middle of a fucking chase. He, so the ostensive plot of this movie is that Steven Seagal is called in to do an op and they're like, you know, the most he's important an doer. In first op, of all, yeah. that's, that's he's, his that's background. He's a pre-op. Job. Pre-op. <laughs> <laughs> so pre-op, they, uh, they're like, so Steven, we're getting you everything you need for your op, which is a 26 year old woman who wants to fuck you for some reason and Asian Kyle McLaughlin who and plays has a remote control cars and helicopters so their adversaries are like it's the Mexican drug cartel and Al Qaeda Hezbollah yep, <laughs> yep. yeah they're we never like really know chocolate and peanut butter you know, yeah, we never really know what they're doing I mean I think Al- they want to smuggle like this bomb maker Rauf yeah Rauf yeah. to America across the border but, but it's yeah, un- yeah, but it's like I think Felix said you know that that classic economy we all know and love the drugs for terrorism yeah yeah <laughs> like you know, I, you know I just love that terrorism you guys do 9-11 I like, mean, uh, forget what Al Qaeda did. Forget about the billions of dollars in drugs we smuggle across this border every year. It's much more valuable <laughs> for us to get you over there so you could do a terror attack that will destroy our entire business. Yeah, so the Sinola cartel is just like, yeah, we're actually out of money. We just gave away all our drugs to see terrorism happen. <laughs> it's our favorite thing, but. They never actually get it done because every meeting between, like, you actually can't tell who's the cartel no. and who's Al Qaeda Hezbollah because it's <laughs> well, just, yeah, because it's just all a bunch Dagestani. of right. It's all a bunch of Dagestani's in like ill-fitting fourteen-button pinstripe suits <laughs> who are like, "You told me no one would be here," and the other guy is like, "I only told you to expect what you did not expect." <laughs> the man who speaks does not plan. The man who plans does not speak. And then there's <laughs> then there's just a fucking barrel of molasses in a leather jacket wandering outside the mansion, hitting guys in the back of the head. Just and this just, shuffling, yeah. marinated yeah. bear. Like, there's, there's one scene like <laughs> there's one scene uh, towards the, the end of the movie when what is I guess supposed to be the climax of the movie, where like oh it's all really happening, where like he sneaks into like the terror drug compound, and it's just like. 
you motherfuckers didn't count on a man moving this slowly, did you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, just yeah. Like, there's like some guy by the security camera and there's literally a long <laughs> shot of him. They're like, he's very slowly walking up behind you and then the guy turns around and sees him and Seagal keeps walking towards him at the same pace. That, I mean... And then he just like does the Seagal <laughs> thing where he just sort of like... Fli- does his arm his he flicks his arms around and like throws the guy on the ground and then just keeps standing completely immobile waiting for the guy to get back <laughs> up again so he can throw him on the ground felt, another time it felt like he had watched the raid 2 in preparation because he did that weird fight thing where like he put his totally limp wrist up against the oh, limp right. wrist yeah, of yeah. the other guy like like in gonna, the kitchen scene like the, the kitchen that, scene yeah. in raid 2 or whether he throws the guy on the ground and he's like stay down bitch <laughs> <laughs> Stay down, bitch. But, but let's not give the listeners the wrong impression. This is a dialogue driven movie. Yes. Oh my god, oh, it's there's all so much like talking. Rock and talking. There's so much talking. There are at least three total like digressions, almost breaking the fourth wall where he's like, by the way, we don't hate Muslims. <laughs> we all know that devout believers. Real believers of all faiths have nothing to do with the rise in violence across the world, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't do anything to stop it. Like, he's literally like, well, no, I don't care about, you know, anyone's religion. And the girl's like, right, because the true believers don't do terrorism. And they're like looking into the camera. And we don't care about what their ethnicity is. We don't care. Because like, you know, whatever, the government of Dagestan yeah. made them put this yeah, caveat yeah. Oh my God, there. no, and he said, he's like, you motherfuckers really think this is all about religion? I understand a warrior fighting for their cause, but it's like the great Genghis Khan <laughs> someone said, worship whoever God, but pay me taxes. Yeah. It's like the great Genghis Khan once said, practice your own religion, but pay tax to me. <laughs> You know, who, shout out to his, uh, to uh, Ramsey Kordorov. You, you know, your shining star. You know who <laughs> never killed women and children? Genghis Khan. That's true. Yeah, yeah, really? yeah, yeah. So this movie, when you watch it, like there are technically things happening every thirty every thirty minutes. Steven Seagal, like in this universe, in the universe of Seagal, the worst thing that can happen to you is a fat guy touching a wrist, and that's why he wears <laughs> that's why he wears divorce guy bracelets, so no one can do it to him. But every thirty minutes, there's a sequence of that, but. In between it, like as Amber said, it's so dialogue driven. It actually feels like depression. It oh, God, after yeah. we should have done like a conference call to a suicide hotline yeah, because, because I felt ended, directionless we so and without purpose. It's like- we had been slowly exposed to radiation poisoning over the course of watching this movie, and our like bones were just absorbing uranium. And we're, it's By like the end, it ironically was like wearing a lead vest, walking yeah. down a hotel hallway full of clothes. Yeah, stores. it's almost as though a shadowy Eastern European regime had doused us with polonium. <laughs> watching this movie, it will give you the same sensation as taking a bubble bath in Fukushima water. <laughs> Why she get? Uh, it's like when they when you're at the dentist's office and they give you that lead apron and then leave the room, <laughs> yeah, after pointing a giant yeah. like gun at your head, yeah. and then you know, they also the, make you smoke the four dollar gas station cigarettes that are called like Mavericks. They took one look at you and saw you a mile away. You're an Arab. You're not Mexican. I learned a lot about the, about the dangers of the Mexican border. Uh, why we need a wall? To Turkey. It's actually the Turkish Syrian yeah. border Tur- in that yeah. movie. <laughs> wait a minute. Turkish, wait, no, wait a minute. Well. The Syrian, Syrian border, border. They were smuggling him from Mexico too. Yeah. You know, the whole movie took place in in Istanbul. Yeah, but they kept going to yeah, Sonora. They, they literally. Yeah, no, it's I'm, the U.S. border. Okay, how, so how, how drunk were you, Will? Yeah, you're too drunk. You well, no, I mean like they were going to sneak people across the U.S. Mexican border, but like that didn't prevent the movie from taking place entirely in Turkey. No, it wasn't no, entirely it in Turkey. He, literally had, he was in Mexico he, for the first two seasons. No, you guys were drunk. I read no, this movie I, correctly. No, I, the no. only it's location had, in this you movie. You were the only drunk was person. On the Absolutely border correct. And grilling in the a guy very beginning. In, a, in the very, very beginning. That was that, a... That was the, yes, that's the that's, porter that they've been talking yes. about. Steven, you're tearing us apart. 